In today's video, I'm going to continue with my discussion on the 2023 WAS physics practical, specifically as regards the optics experiment. This video will be all about the simulation of one of the poss possible experiments you should expect under optics. If you haven't seen the part one, I highly encourage you to check that out because I discuss in detail the theory behind this experiment. But in this video, I will just go right into the simulation to just show you how to carry this out using the Marvinov Physics Lab. The Marvinov Physics Lab is a virtual environment that allows you to simulate physics experiment and it gives you realistic results once uh, you, you follow the steps properly. So let's get started. So this is the Marvinov Physics Lab. I'm going to go to the experiments menu. Then under optics, you select experiment eight. So let's take a look at how the setup looks like. So here you have a plane mirror together with a rectangular prism. There's a mistake with this label. This plane mirror label is actually the rectangular prism. The plane mirror is at the back of the rectangular prism. So these are the parameters that you, you, you expect you are expected to have in this exper in this particular physics experiment. So let me just walk you through the procedure. So here's how it works. You position pin one and two on this side. You measure this angle, this incident uh, angle. Then you draw a line and place two points on this line O one R. Then the next thing you do is you position your eyes. On this on the right side of this incident line then you try to trace these two pins so you trace the you trace the two pins using another pin and once you successfully trace the two pins you mark those two points then you draw a line joining line p3 and p4 and the line is going to touch this rectangular prism at point o2 so the next thing you do is to draw your normal your perpendicular line at O1 and at O2, then you measure a distance between O1 and O2, and that's D. Then you also measure, you also stretch out this line. So you stretch it out by just drawing a line from O1 to, to Q, then from O2 to Q. So the question is how do you determine the point Q? You determine point Q by drawing a perpendicular line at the middle of these two points. That is, O1 and O2, you, you figure out the midpoint, then draw a perpendicular line along that midpoint. So along that midpoint, you you have your Q at this top region. Then that's how you draw this line N1 Q. I mean this line O1 Q and line O2 Q. So what are the things you have to take note of? You have to take note of the following measurement. I, E, theta and d so these are the, these are the four numbers you you have to take note of then you have to compute sine e and that will be m then you also compute d times cos theta over two so we are going to go through all of that so let's get right into the experiment there is a simulation environment so the first thing you want to do is to is to look at the reading so what are the readings we are going to set i to be 10 up to 50. We'll measure the value of D, theta, E, M, and A. M is sine E, and A is D times cos theta over 2. So let's set our I to be 10. So let's set this I to be at point 10. So the next thing we need to do is to position our highs. So you, you treat, this is the part where you trace P1 and P2. So, but to carry this out within this simulation environment, what we what you do is you put, try to move this slider until these two pins, as P1 and P2 are aligned. Once they are aligned, you stop. So you can check if they've aligned by using the zoom tool. So they're almost perfectly aligned. So we can assume that they are aligned at this point. 
Then the next thing we do is to take measurements. So to take measurements, you, you record D. So D is, D is 2.2 centimeters. So let's record it. 2.2 centimeters. So what about theta? So theta, you get that value from this protractor at the top. So, so the value of theta is roughly 13. 13 degrees. And what about the value of E? That's the incidence angle. That's roughly 10. So here you have 10. And what about the value of M? M is sine 10. And that will give you 0 0.1736. Then what about n? n is d times cos theta over 2. So theta over 2 is 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5. So we're going to say 2.2 .2 times cos 6.5. So that will give us 2.186. So let's move on to the second reading. When i is 20. When i is 20, you move i to 20. Then the next thing you do is to move your eye until you see both pins aligned. So let's adjust until we until we are confident that both pins are fully aligned. So this is this should be aligned. Then the next thing we do is to take your measurements. So the value of D is now about four centimeters. So D is, let's say four centimeters. Then the value of theta will be into 4.5. So this will be 24.5 degrees. Then the value of E is 20 degrees. You should know that the value of E is roughly the same thing. It's the same thing as the value of R because the emergence angle in this case is equal to the angle of incidence. So what about M? M is sine E, which is sine 20, and that's 0 0.342. Then the value of N, which is D times cos it over 2 will give you 3.91. So the next is to compute the value of the next is to take the third reading. So for the rest of the reading, I'm not going to go through each of them step by step. I'll quickly run through them so that I'll be able to move on to the graph. I've completed the table of readings. So now let's move on to the graph section. Note that we are making a plot of M against M. So let's go to the plot section. So I'm going to walk you through how to plot this on a graph. So for every plot, the first thing I do is to define the title. So in this case, we are making a plot of M versus N. On the x-axis, we have N. Then on the y-axis, we have N. Once you've labeled your axis, the next step is to define the scale on the on both axes, that is the scale on the x and y axis. You can get detail about how to get a good scale from our videos on how to make a good scale. But here I'm going to just tell you the scale I'm going to use that will ensure that at least our lines cross through, uh, uh, occupies about two thirds of the space on this graph. So for this particular instance, I'm going to use for the x-axis, I'm going to use, is, uh, I'm going to start from minus 1, I'm going to end at 9. And so for the y-axis, I'm going to use the following as my scale, minus 0 0.1. The maximum will be 0 0.8. Then I'm going to use a scale of 0 0.1. So this is how you set your scale on both axes. Once you've done the scaling, the next is to locate the point on the graph. 
to do that on this simulator you just pick this pencil this graph point pencil then you identify when n is 2.186 m is zero so we look for 2.186 which is somewhere here so 186 here yeah, almost so it's almost at 2.2 then the other one is 0 0.176 1736 1736 somewhere here so let's pick this point then the next is where you have 3.91 three points this is 3.91 somewhere here then you have 0 0.342 342 somewhere here so this is the next point then you have when you have 5.524 this 5 point this 5.5 somewhere here right 5.524 so you have uh, 0 0.5 which is right here so that gives us this then the next is we have 7.3087. So this 7.3 somewhere here. Then we have 0 0.64. 0 0.6427. 28. So this is somewhere here. Then we have 8.6. So 8.6, that is somewhere here, 6.33. Then you have 0 0.766. So this is somewhere here. So now we've gotten all our points. So the next thing is to draw line of best fit. We expect the line of best fit to go through the origin, which is zero. So you can just draw a line of best fit this way to touch as many points as possible. Then this is it. So the next is to get the slope. So to get a slope done, you click on this slope, pick any two points. So let's pick this point and let's pick this point. So, what we do we have a uh, this is y1 and y2. So, y1 is 0 0.3, y2 is 0 0.5. Then the difference is 0 0.2. The next is x1. So, this is x1, which is 3.4. 3.4. The x2 is this which is in between this, which is 5.7. So let's say roughly 5.7. And the difference is 2.3. Then if you take the slope, the slope is 0 0.2 divided by 2.3, and that will be 0 0.087. So that, that becomes the slope. So we are done with the graph. So this is how you go about the graph. So the next is to answer any question that you have here. So here we have to compute the following two times W times the slope. So W is nine centimeters based on that width of the prism. Then if you multiply that with the slope, you're going to 1.565. So this is the refractive index. Of the, of the rectangular glass prism. So for the other questions, you can just, according to the, you can answer them, according to the law of reflection, angle of is equal to angle of reflection, the answer is yes. Then for the third question, we can deduce from stars of angle of is equal to angle of emergence for rectangular glass prism. So let's say this is yes. So, we are done. So the next thing is to submit and let's see how we perform in this.
experiment. Now let's take a look at the results. So for under, under the reading section, the score is 20, 92%. Then for the axis, 65.7. So this software gives you a detailed analysis on how we perform on different aspects of the experiment. So let's take a look at why the reading is not 100%. You can see that there's a slight discrepancy here. So there's a kind of, my, the difference between my results and the actual result is relatively huge, although not so huge. So that's the reason why we have this slight uh, difference in, in uh, the results. So the next is the graph. So in my case, I chose this as my axis. Whereas the ideal axis is this, where you have a spacing of two instead of one. Yeah, the reason for that is in most graph paper, the your paper is basically in form of portrait. So generally, the height is generally uh, uh, longer than the, the width. So the height is, is, is you have more spacing. Uh, vertically than horizontally. So you are, you are not expected to assume that you have a lot of space horizontally. But on this software, you have more space horizontally. That's the reason why I chose this scale. So if you want to know more, more about how to get the right scale, you can watch our video on how to set your scale. Then for the rest of the experiments, everything seems fine. So this is how you perform this experiment and you can practice and simulate phys physics experiments using the Marvin of Physics Lab. You can download it uh, from our website and you can also take a look at other experiments that you can simulate.